All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel or welcome if you are new here. Now, today is a jam-packed video. We have a lot going on today. Everything from my brand new puffer fish, my saltwater puffer, who is the cutest thing in the world, all the way to a surprise unboxing from MaxSpec. They sent over a couple aquarium goodies, uh, some of their new product releases, so we're totally gonna be checking those out and putting those into use today. But without further ado, we just need to jump right into the title and thumbnail of this video. I got a baby puffer fish. So quick backstory, um, I drove about an hour and a half to a town very close to mine. Anyway, so. That has a few aquarium stores. I went to a local reef store, got some corals, which I'll show you in a minute or later in this video. And then I also went to this other aquarium store where I got some just basic freshwater stuff and I fell in love with this cute little puffer fish. So he is a Pearl Toby puffer. He was $20, so I bought him. I actually watched him eat in the store because the fish store feeds the same fish food I do, which is the Reef Nutrition TDO pellets. I've talked about them a ton. I love that fish food and my fish do too. So I made sure that the puffer fish was eating in the store and I bought him and brought him home and he is now currently sitting in a quarantine tank. Without further ado, here is the quarantine tank. So this is a Fluval Evo five gallon tank, a very minimal setup, a couple rocks in there, a little bit of Kato algae and the puffer fish. So here he is, he is the cutest thing in the world. Now, obviously when I first got him, I was a little worried about eating just because that is something to be worried about with new fish. So that's why I put him in the quarantine tank. Because he is so small, I had to make sure he was eating. So I got some live brine shrimp as well as some TDO pellets. I put a little bit of the live brine shrimp in with him. And as you can see, he wrecked the live brine shrimp. He absolutely loved that stuff. So he was eating amazing on day one. And then I also fed him some TDO pellets, which is just pelleted fish food that all my fish get. And he was loving that stuff as well. So he sat in the quarantine tank for a little bit and he is now pretty much ready to go in the reef tank. Because he was so small, I was just worried about him being in the big tank. And also puffer fish sometimes have a tendency to nip on corals and invertebrate. Well, my snails are pretty big. I don't have that many hermit crabs and I have two large shrimp. So I am worried about him picking on the shrimp. That's why I wanted to make sure he was fat and happy in the quarantine tank before putting him in this big tank. And because this tank is so big, I had to make sure he was eating in there first because the other fish in here are so aggressive when it comes to feeding that I had to make sure that he would be able to get some food when he's in this tank. So now that he's eating good, he is ready to go in the tank behind me. But before we go grab him and start acclimating him into this tank, I want to get the tank ready for him. We got a couple new corals like I mentioned and they need to be placed on the rock still. I need to fix my elegance coral, he keeps blowing away. And that is where the max spec stuff comes in today. So Maxpec sent over a whole bunch of stuff and I'm just gonna show everything to you that I received. The first thing, which I think is going to be my favorite, are these. It's hard for you to see them, but these are coral grabbers. They have two sizes. There's a large one right here and like a smallish medium one. So popping these right on out of the bag, these are basic aquarium tongs. Now I didn't really think these were that special in the beginning until I used them. So they have these little rubber grips right here, which is perfect for grabbing coral and moving coral. You just pull here and then it obviously squeezes down like a normal grabber. So like I mentioned, these little silicone tips or rubber tips come in handy when grabbing small corals. It's very easy to maneuver and this long one is perfect in my 120 gallon reef tank. Now I also used it to stir up some of the algae on the sand bed. As algae collects on the sand bed, it's good to keep that agitated. And this is the perfect length to be able to agitate my sand bed, move corals around, pick up the little seaweed clip that sometimes falls to the bottom of the tank without having to get my hands wet. So this thing right here is a lifesaver. Now I've actually bought some of these coral grippers in the past. They sell them at the dollar store, believe it or not. But the problem with those is that they rust so fast. So the thing I love about this one, and I have been using it for a little bit, is when you pick it out of the water, um, it doesn't leak a lot. So sometimes with the other ones, I had issues with water dripping down the whole thing and it would get water everywhere. This one is very clean and easy to use. And also I have not had it rusting. So on the other ones, the actual little thingy inside would totally get all rusted up but these are made with anti-corrosion material. Same thing with the tweezers, so rusting is not an issue, at least it has not been an issue so far for me, which is miles ahead of the competition because all the other ones I used get rusty and nasty so fast, and you don't want that rust contaminating your water. Now, like I said, it comes in two sizes, and the larger one is 32.5 inches, and the smaller one is 23.5 inches. So depending on the depth of your tank, there's two different sizes to suit your needs. I'm using the large one just because my tank is so deep and it's perfect to maneuver around. Next up is another thing that comes in handy when grabbing and moving corals, and these are their coral tweezers. So let me pop these open out of the little box real quick, or the packaging, and here these are. So they're little forceps. As you can see, you can just hold them here, 
and basically just tweeze them here. They have those soft rubber tips so you don't harm coral when you're grabbing it. Very easy at this little angle right here to you know, move corals around, stick them under rocks, whatever. These are made of carbon fiber and they're naturally buoyant, meaning if you let go of this in your tank, it's gonna sit there and float. It's not gonna float to the top, it's not gonna sink behind your rocks, it's just gonna sit there in place, which is great. So little simple four steps, you go into your tank, you can move stuff around, planted tank, saltwater tank, planting plants, this is perfect, grab your plants, shove them right in. A good pair of aquarium tweezers is very important. And then last but not least, something I'm very excited to try out today is the coral putty, which is a quick curing two-part putty. We'll just open it on up right here. It comes with a little spoon to measure it out. And as you can see, there's two parts. So you take a little bit of the red, a little bit of the white, um, on a one-to-one -one ratio, mix that together, and then you have 60 seconds to maneuver it and put it wherever you want. So the idea is you put some of this on the coral base, and then you put some of it on like a rock or something, and it fuses the coral to the rock, so you can use the rock to stay in your sand bed or just fuse it right to your rock arch or display so the coral does not fall off, doesn't get blown off, doesn't get knocked off by a fish. So I think first things first, let's look at the two new corals I got. So first up here is my elegance coral. It sits in this front part, but the flow just tends to blow it back into that corner. So we're gonna fuse that base to a piece of rock rubble so it stays here a little bit better. But here are the two new corals. So I have this little plate coral in the back which will go on top of this rock arch right here. And then I have these little zoas who aren't quite opening up, but I'm not sure where those are gonna go quite yet. Maybe on this rock right here, I'm not sure. But we're gonna pop this guy up here with some coral putty, and then we're gonna fuse this guy to that rock so it'll stay in place, looking beautiful front and center. By the way, the anemones are going crazy. Like, look at how many anemones I have. Like, it's almost an issue how many anemones we have. Same thing with this waving hand coral. Like, it's getting out of hand. Okay, so I have the little rock I'm gonna set up right back here. That's where the elegance coral is gonna be on. I'm gonna take our coral grabber right here and just get this elegance coral a little bit closed up and prepared to go ahead and be moved. You can't see it right now, but he's right here. I'm gonna get him to close up a little bit just so we can access this little pointy part which is where we're actually gonna attach the coral glue or the coral putty, I should. So now that I got the elegance coral pretty much prepped uh, this is my first time using this stuff, so we're gonna do this together. But I'm going to open this up and we're gonna take a little bit of the red and a little bit of the white and just try to get this to work. Now this stuff cures extremely fast, so we have 60 seconds to do this. Let's just see, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. I don't wanna use too much because I don't want you know a crazy amount of coral putty for my first time. So we're gonna take this little piece of white right here and then we're gonna get a little bit of red. I'm gonna try to go for about the same amount, so just like that. Now I've got like literally 20 seconds to mix this up. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all kneaded up. I might actually need a little bit more. I really didn't get that much, that's my bad. Uh, we can always use a little bit more, but I'm gonna take the rock right here, put a little glob right there in the rock, and then I'm gonna pull this elegance coral up, like so. Very small base, so it's hard to grab onto. Okay, blah, 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 blah. You don't care about this part, it's really boring. It's just me literally putting the piece of um, coral putty on the coral and trying to get it to attach. It kept sliding off. It was a struggle, to be honest with you. Okay, so that was a little bit harder than I anticipated. Um, what I went ahead and did was, if you can see, I had to smear the coral putty onto the actual coral base first, and that's what was giving me problems, is I was trying to put it on the rock first, which it just like was not happening. Like it it wasn't working. So what I did was I went ahead and put it on the coral base and then attached it from the rock and that ended up working a little bit nicer. Um, I was kind of in a rush doing it because I thought it would cure faster than it did. So you don't really have to be in a rush. You can totally be patient with it. It's really not that big of a deal. But now what we're gonna do is take this coral and kind of bury that rock base. And what this is gonna do is as that putty completely hardens, like I said, it'll hopefully fuse to this little coral or to this little rock base, allowing the coral to not fly away when it's open. So I hope I didn't injure the coral too much. It's very upset right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and let it, you know, do its thing, let it recover from being out of the water and being thrashed around. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the other two corals a little bit later. A few moments later. So I went ahead and finished up with the coral putty. It's not my favorite thing to use. It definitely was a little bit of a challenge because the corals kept sliding off and then nothing would stick. It was honestly a little bit of an issue. This coral is still recovering. 
but I think I found the key to use the coral putty out of water. It does not work very well in water because the water just makes it slide off. So if you're gonna use coral putty of any brand, I would highly recommend doing it out of water. But now we got these corals in place, let's just hope they stay. And without further ado, I think we're ready for the puffer fish. And just like that, the puffer fish is now drip acclimating. So we'll just go ahead and let this guy wait until the container fills all the way up and then we'll release him from here into the tank. Later. All right, after some drip acclimation, our little puffer fish is ready to go into the big 120 gallon tank. Now like, just look, like compared to the rest of the fish, he's so tiny, like look at him. Let's just go ahead and get this whole thing right on in here. And I'll let him just go ahead and, you know, swim out on his own. Maybe. I don't know. He really likes that corner. He's so tiny. Oh, no. Come on. Get out. Okay. You got to come out. Come on. There he is. Oh, my God. He's literally so tiny I compared to all the other fish. Okay. There he is. Look, like, compared to the nasotang. He's so small. This is literally the smallest saltwater fish I've ever had. Okay, whoa, 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 that wrasse just tried to attack him. So I'm gonna see how he does in here just because he's so small. <laughs> if this doesn't go well, I might just have to make his own tank, the five gallon. Um, the tank's still set up, so he should be totally good. I just really want him to be in here because this is where I want him to be with all my other saltwater fish. So he's not hiding or anything. He's just kind of chilling out, really honestly looking for things to eat. He's already picking around the rocks and just looking for food. So as long as the other fish are not aggressive towards him, we should have no issues here. And he just ate something. I really hope that wasn't a piece of coral because if he starts chewing on coral, then we're going to have a problem. I mean, he's definitely curious. All these huge fish just like dominate over him, but these guys aren't aggressive at all. So he's just zooming around back there. And that's pretty much the update. Oh, he's by the shrimp. That's what he was doing. He was going to look at the shrimp because he wants to eat the shrimp, but the shrimp is so big and he's so tiny. It's not a problem. Where'd he go? He's gone. Oh, he's over there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and let this guy, you know, get used to his surroundings, uh, chill out a little bit, and then I'll come back when we feed the fish later. And we'll see how everyone's doing. A few moments later. Oh, my, you better not do it. No, 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 no. Do you see what he's doing? Do you see what he's doing? This is an issue. This is a problem. This is not good. Oh, no. Really? This is not good. Two days later. Okay, so it is a few days later. I let the puffer fish go ahead and settle in. We did see him nipping some coral, but it stopped after that and I haven't seen him do it anymore. The one coral he was nipping on is like back there and it's honestly looking really rough. Um, I don't know what to do about that. One of the corals we cemented to the rock actually did fall off. That is that coral right there. So I have to fix that guy. You can see the little coral glue is still stuck on him. But this little plate coral is doing good. Now there is the puffer. Of course, he's so small. It's literally impossible to focus on him with this camera. Like it's actually so difficult. But only update here is that he's been doing really good. He's not eating all of the foods. He always eats pellets. But um, I've tried feeding brine shrimp. He doesn't really like brine shrimp. Um, he loves live brine shrimp, but freeze dried just isn't his thing and he doesn't like flakes, but he does love the pellets and so that is good to know. He really likes his corner for some reason. I think overall we are pretty successful so far. I haven't seen him bother any of the shrimp and obviously he hasn't bothered any of the other fish and none of the other fish have bothered him. So I think we're going to be in pretty good shape with the baby Toby puffer fish. So that is going to be just about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them down below and I'll try my best to answer all of them. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and good bye.